Hi, I'm John, and today I'm going to be talking about my two years, my two-year anniversary with Linux, and it's been a great experience. Um, I, I did one of these last year, uh, and you know, you get through a year, and you you kind of look at things, and you go, okay, is this the way I'm going as far as the distribution goes, or or do I need to know more to really make this work better? And come to find out, I really didn't. And I started messing around at first with Linux uh, when I first got a Raspberry Pi. And so I had the Raspberry Pi 4, and it worked really well. And I realized that, wow, it's a you could use it as a desktop. I could have done my business all on the Raspberry Pi. I could have done that. And that's when I said, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's get something that's more made for the desktop. So I went to Linux Mint after doing some research. And Mint was really great, and it still is. I love the Cinnamon version. It's a great operating system. Recently, I went back to Kubuntu. Now, in the past uh, couple of years, the first year, I was going with Linux Mint exclusively, and I was just learning the ins and outs of Linux. And then I decided I was going to go to something like the KDE Plasma desktop. I realized I could run it on top of Linux Mint, but it doesn't work totally okay. Uh, and you don't get the latest version of the Plasma desktop. So I went with uh, Kubuntu, and um, I did that for a while, went back to Linux Mint. I've come back to Kubuntu now because I really like the KDE Plasma desktop. And, of course, I tried all sorts of other operating systems in that two years when I was doing some distro hopping. I tried KDE Neon because I thought, well, this is something that caters to the latest and greatest of, of KDE Plasma. But I found it to be a little more buggy than I like. And then I tried Manjaro, too, on one of my computers. And, um, you know, once I went down the Debian route and you... You start to do things with command lines and things like that. You get used to something like that. And then, you know, to learn Arch, you have to kind of relearn um, kind of how to make the commands and everything. So I went away from that right away. That wasn't something that was serious. I tried MX Linux uh, also, and then Pop! OS, too, I used for a while uh, as my daily driver. So I've, I've done a lot of daily driving with uh, several different versions of Linux. And, you know, all of them, all these versions of, of Linux are better than Windows ever was. I can't tell you how much uh, clearer your computing experience is with Linux. Uh, your updates are easy. Um, they're fast. And so you... You really don't have to think about it too much. You can get so much more done and be more productive because you're not thinking about all the ways you've got to cater to the operating system. That's one of the problems with Microsoft Windows is that uh, not only these days do you have to um, make sure that the software is updated properly and the updates take forever and they're really kludgy updates, but then also they're demanding um, software and hardware, you know, be all for Windows. Uh, Windows, they want this hardware for the new version, that hardware. You know, that's, that's what's going on. And so you're going to have to make updates when the computer that you have is, is probably plenty good to use with Linux and totally get... Uh, a great computing experience. It always floors me that these different uh, Linux projects, these different versions, uh, they get a group of people together and along with the kernel, uh, and they create an operating system that functions better than what Microsoft puts out with all their resources and all their billions of dollars. It, it amazes me that this is the better operating system, um, Linux, in any flavor. Any flavor of Linux is going to be better than Windows. So if you're using Windows and thinking about switching to something that's more simple, easy, more secure, 
uh, just functions better. Uh, you know, give any one of these distributions from Linux a try. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And especially if you're brand new, um, Linux Mint is a real good one to go with. Uh, I still think that's for the entree. It couldn't have been a better operating system for me. I still like it. Still am going to use it in the future. Uh, I just wish they had better integration with a little more updated kernels. Uh, Kubuntu gives me that, and I do like the KDE Plasma desktop. So yeah, I just couldn't get away from that. I like the Cinnamon desktop, but I love the KDE Plasma desktop. It just is It's pretty. It's got all the bells and whistles that I want. And now you can even upgrade to uh, 5.27 when you use Kubuntu in this long-term 22.04 uh, long-term support version. So anyway, what would I say about two years? You know, after a year, I went, wow, this is great. But after two years, you get this solid knowledge of what you have to do and what you need to do, what works and what doesn't. It doesn't take that long to learn how to use it. I mean, um, within a week, um, week, maybe two, of first using Linux Mint uh, at the beginning, um, I was totally up and running, being very productive on everyday stuff. Uh, but then you start to discover other things that you may like better. And it takes a little time to understand that this goes with that better and vice versa. You know, all these different distributions all have their strengths and weaknesses. Most of them, I would say, if you're comparing them to Windows, it's all strength. Uh, <laughs> they're just better. But between the different versions, you're going to have different strengths and weaknesses. Like with, with Linux Mint, it's uh, the Cinnamon uh, desktop. It is rock solid. It is great. Uh, I have nothing but good words to say about it. And uh, the only thing is that it stays a little bit behind where I'd like to be uh, with the kernel and things. So, uh, and then integration with something like KDE. I wish they'd come out with a version that was totally um, KDE uh, up to date and so forth. But, you know, you know what you're getting with Linux Mint, and it's something really solid. With something like Kubuntu, I can get that KDE Plasma desktop, I can get the latest kernel or pretty close to it and off you go some of these other ones i didn't like as much kde kde neon i didn't like that much uh, mx linux is good a lot of people like it pop os has the gnome desktop and i don't like that so much so i'm back to kubuntu and probably going to stay here for a, a long time now and that's what happens after a long time you start to see what you really like and you really start to make sense of it. Um, you know, the one thing that Linux doesn't have going for it that uh, the other operating systems do, they have all sorts of money backing it up. Um, not saying that these uh, distributions don't have money behind them. Uh, they do, and they do take contributions, but they do it for a whole lot less. And, it, you know, it's almost like, People are doing it because it's a passion for them, first and foremost. Uh, but it's amazing what they can accomplish working together as disparate groups or disparate people, uh, not under the same roof, and make an operating system that's better than Windows, for sure. Um, I, I just wish people could change over. I wish we could get away from Windows. Because sometimes I talk to people and, you know, they'll talk Windows and like it's this great thing. And it's, it's frankly just horrible. So uh, after being in, it, in Linux for two years, you realize how horrible your computing life was with Windows. And once you get out of it, you go, wow, I don't have to think about it. I'm just real productive. Um, I can do a bunch of fun things with it without busting it up without breaking it or causing blue screens of death. There's none of that. 
and it's just really clean and good. It's, it's as good as man has ever done with an operating system. That's what I believe. Um, it doesn't get any better than this. And, you know, that stretches all the way back to Linus Torvalds and, and how he started things. He wanted to build an operating system for himself. Now, of course, he doesn't endorse any of these uh, distributions. All he cares about is the kernel and that's his thing. He's a coder. He's a hardcore guy, and he doesn't really, doesn't really like people that much, I think. <laughs> but the people that uh, do take that technology and adopt it and work on it uh, make it for people like me, just everyday people. And as an everyday, uh, an everyday driver, it really is the best way to go when you're talking about doing your computing in whatever form that takes a little bit of a learning curve but not much pretty easy and so if you're coming from windows thinking about going to linux you know give it a shot you'll like it and you can't just take like what some of these guys did like um oh one of these big youtubers he said oh i'll do a 30-day challenge to make it my everyday driver well big deal that doesn't tell you anything. 30 days is not enough to really understand it and to really understand the, the freedom that it offers and the beauty of it and the, uh, the simplicity and the clear-minded thinking that had to go behind making this work so well. Uh, 30 days is not enough. And I knew within the first couple of days that I was more productive. I was getting things done better. I was having less problems. And all of a sudden, all my operating system woes went away uh, when I got rid of Windows. It, Windows is a horrible operating system because they've kludged it up over the years. They just keep adding code to it. And they can't get rid of anything because it's got to be compatible with everything. But, you know, I, I think Linux is probably a much cleaner code. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not that kind of coder or anything like that. I, I've done some things, um, you know, some pretty basic things, but uh, it would seem to me that it is cleaner, uh, not kludgy, <laughs> like Windows, and you're going to find that you have just this great computing experience. The only problem is they really don't have a good uh, marketing uh, budget of any kind into the marketplace. All these distributions should get together and create an association of Linux marketing and have it all be, you know, contribute uh, monies to this and then uh, start to advertise because it really would be better for a lot of people. And if you're an average computer user, this is the way to go, whether it's Linux Mint, Kubuntu, Manjaro, whatever it might be, you'll find that you'll, you'll have a better experience and your life will feel better. Everything will feel better. It's, you know, I don't want to make it sound like a panacea, but for computing, it definitely is, I think. It's the way to go. And anybody who, who hasn't looked into it uh, doesn't understand uh, they're, they're not going, and more, more than 30 days, but doing it for a period of time like I have, you've gone up to two years of just using it all the time. You get so comfortable with it, and you go, I see why they do it this way. I see why it's done that way, and it's just a great thing. So, uh, But a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about it, and those misconceptions continue on, and it's because they don't have a coherent message because there's so many distributions and they're all doing something a little bit different. All good, but all a little bit different. So kind of a negative if they could ever get their marketing act together and uh, really try to pull together to get more people to adopt it. Um, they would find uh, that would probably be the, the right thing to do. Just my opinion. I, you know, there's no central hub for promoting Linux. It's each individual small distribution is promoting itself.
but at some point they're going to have to come together um, to go after the big behemoth, uh, which is Microsoft and Mac, Mac OS too, for that matter. I'm not a Mac fan, and I think they way overcharge for their hardware, and so does uh, so does Windows, and they're starting to demand things like you have to have certain kinds of hardware, certain kinds of boot up sequences. Uh, I think they'd like to make it so that you could never install um, uh, Linux on your computer. That's the way they'd like to do it with a certain boot thing. And I guess there's been some rumbling that that's something they're trying to figure out uh, because they don't want this in people's uh, thought process because it is better. You don't have to pay for it if you don't want to. Uh, you certainly can contribute to it, but anyway, that's what the last two years it has taught me. I'm more productive. Uh, I don't have the problems I used to have with Windows, which were many, and uh, life is better as a result of using Linux. That you know, it sounds real, you know, hippie '60s type thing. You know, oh man, my life is so much better now uh, using using Linux. Wow, man. Uh, I suppose it is. I suppose it becomes almost a spiritual thing. Uh, <laughs> and you get real passionate about it. And you, you can't understand why other people don't adopt it readily or haven't heard of it. It's, it's too bad. <laughs> so if you're thinking about making a switch and if you're using Windows... <laughs> Try Linux, but don't just try it for... And it, and if you're really skittish, you can dual boot it with Windows. Although I suggest you not do that. I suggest you back up all your data and just go headlong like I did into Linux. Don't do the dual booting. You, once you get start using Linux, you're never going to want to go back to Windows again. You won't. And if you do... Um, uh, if you think that's the thing to do, well, then, uh, you know, we can't help you anymore. We can't. Um, you know, you've been ingrained with what they tell you, and it's a completely different mindset. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, uh, that's it. You have a, a great day, and we'll be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.